The objective today is to describe how ingress filtering protects a network from certain threats. So a pretty interesting lesson on a vocab word, ingress filtering, that comes with lots of supportive, hopefully memorable examples. So you feel comfortable if you were to hear this fancy pants looking word. So it says here, in computer networking, ingress filtering is a technique used to ensure that incoming packets are actually from the networks from which they claim to originate. This can be used as a countermeasure against various spoofing attacks, where the attacker's packets contain fake IP addresses to make it difficult to find the source of the attack. This technique is often used in the denial of service attack, and thus this is the primary target of ingress filtering. And as a visual, if you don't know what a denial of service attack, here is an example. Say we have a web server where people want to go to this website, but maybe it can't serve that regular user because some attacker has lots of different computers or one computer pretending to be lots of different computers putting in requests to it. An easy way to remember what this ingress word means is just think, incoming packets. And if we're talking about a host, I'm ingress filtering when I'm saying that only a certain type of IP address can come into my network. And as you can see based on this visual, it's easier to tell a computer what to accept versus what to block. So here's a possible IP address for me to have, and if it's a slash 24, that means I'm looking at about 254 IPs gaining access into this particular network. And the way this works is simple yet genius. You can read more by reading RFC 2827, but basically routers will install these filters to drop packets from networks that are downstream of them. So if in this network right here, I make a request to an IP address that's already over here, this router doesn't have to uh, use that. The packet's dropped. If I'm doing something called IP spoofing and I'm a number right here and I'm trying to go out to the internet but my IP isn't a number from this network, let's say I made one up and it's over here, well then when this router gets it it's going to drop it and that request never goes out and bothers anyone else. So that's the note to write right here. Routers will have these filters that will be dropping packets from the networks that are not downstream of them. So if I'm this number over here and I request a Facebook page to be sent but not sent back here, be sent to maybe another cloud or another IP network over here, if that happens and this router detects that, it'll just drop the request. So I can't be over here and say, like, if this is all of Colorado, I can't make a request and say, hey, router, can you give me access to Sony PlayStation Networks and send that back to California maybe. If California is over here, that router is like, no, you're from Colorado. You're from a network called 204-69-207, or I'm not going to process anything that's not within this network you're coming from. And just because practice makes perfect, when you're looking at something that says slash 24 like that, that means the first 24 bits are all ones, which means the network ID is just that number right there. And for every host, that could be a different one over here, which means that that network is a size of possibly 254 different IPs. And to figure out how I figured that out, I mean, if you're not doing this mental math by now, I suggest a website called uh, calculator.net Whoops, let me Google subnet calculator. And down here, calculator.net, they have a good one. So I can go back over here to my number. It's 204-69207. There we go. And I need to change this to a slash 24. Then I click calculate. And the total number of usable hosts is 254. That's because you'll always have one for broadcasting and one for the name of the network itself, the name of the router itself. So ingress filtering, pretty ingenious way to keep people from being naughty on the internet. Also, we have egress filtering. And a good way to remember ingress filtering is by remembering what egress filtering is. I wrote here that you can filter IPs both ways, incoming and outgoing of a network. So maybe if you're a teacher and want to block a particular website like the Imgur website here in our school district, you can't get there. 
One way they may have done this is they found the IP addresses for this website and they just ingress filter that out. Or maybe you egress filter, so if a teacher knows a certain group of students are not very productive when they're on the computer, you could egress filter their IP address so they can't get out to the internet. But they could still use their computer to do their work, to type in a text editor or something. And so as we talk about ingress and egress filtering, remember this can be done on a router or even done on a computer. The host itself can filter out different packets. It says here normally a packet will contain the IP address of the computer that originally sent it, and this allows devices in the receiving network to know where it came from, allowing a reply to be routed back, amongst other things. When IP addresses are used through a proxy or a spoofed IP address, uh, this does not pinpoint a specific user within that pool of users. So as we look at the internet here, if the egress filter doesn't stop the bad guys, the attackers, there's always this backup of an ingress filter once traffic is being sent into this network. So that's a nice little layered security for you there. Now the gateway processing the packet might simply ignore the packet completely, or it might send a packet back to the sender, relaying a message that the illegitimate packet has been denied. And as a reminder here, a gateway is just the type of router that has that direct access to the internet. It's like the head honcho router in your network. Now some more key words for you like host intrusion prevention system. These are an example of technical engineering applications that help identify, prevent, and or deter unwanted, suspected, and or suspicious events and intrusions. HIPS is an installed software packet which monitors a single host for suspicious activity by analyzing events occurring within that host, and in other words, HIPS aims to stop malware by monitoring the behavior of code. So on top of having an ingress or egress filter, some of these security packages can offer more. And then there's this thing called HIDS, Host Intrusion Detection Systems, and these are anti-threat applications like firewalls or antivirus software and even spyware detection programs that are installed on every networked computer. And then that's just redundant for the sentence to say a uh, network computer that has two-way access to the outside environment, such as the internet. Okay, maybe not so redundant. Maybe you have a computer that can read from the internet but not write to the internet. So I threw some more key terms at you, HIPS and HIDS, and I was a little shaky on that. I'm wondering what is the difference between these two things. Somewhere I read someone said that HIPS are recommended in Windows machines and the HIDS on Linux, but that really confused me and made me search a little deeper. I could show you the uh, Stack Exchange answer that I found, and you know, just real simple, detection versus prevention. My takeaway from reading all this, though, is that there is definitely overlap, and that is just a semantic argument, maybe to worry too much about HIDS versus HIPS. This search led me to search for examples of HIDS, so here's some application names for you. OSSEC and AID. If I go back to my slide, the person had mentioned OSSEC, and they're definitely saying the word HIDS there, so okay, maybe the person is right. HIPS and HIDs are all about Windows versus Linux. But I'm a big fan of Malwarebytes, and he writes an article about what is, what is host intrusion prevention systems and how do they work. Malware today is so numerous and diverse that security professionals have known for some time that signature-based solutions would no longer be able to cut it alone. Not only are there too many malware files each day, some of them are able to change their shape and signature as they go along, but if you can't recognize something by its looks, you might be able to recognize it by its behavior. So sure, an ingress filter might help, especially if we know certain IP addresses are bad guy IP addresses, but HIPS will be another layer that looks at the code itself. And if there's any changes to some of your core system, you'll be alerted of those changes, so hopefully this will prevent any malware from infecting your computer. So the last thing I want to share with you is if we're talking about a router, like a typical home router, that home router needs to filter out any IP that's coming in that says its origination is a private IP. Big difference between private and public IPs, and this router cannot accept something with a return address that's a private address. You can read more about that in RFC 1918. I even did a video on this particular RFC. It's so fascinating. But a private IP address is only for inside a private network. 
So to summarize, network ingress filtering is a packet filtering technique used by many internet service providers, these are ISPs, to try to prevent source address spoofing of internet traffic and thus indirectly combat various types of net abuse by making internet traffic traceable to its source. And to go a little deeper now, I want you to think about VPNs and how they relate to this whole concept. If you want to do more reading, here's some great material for you. Check out BCP38, BCP84. Um, these are defined by RFCs 2827, I mentioned that one before. And 3704 would be the one you read after that. All of these readings will help you understand ingress filtering better. So pretty simple, straightforward lesson today. How does ingress filtering work, and what are the pros and cons of using it?